Hey guys, Dr. Jimmy Bagley here. I'm going to give you a quick rundown on laser scanning confocal microscopy. Um, we're using this technique on a project that we've got going on experiment.com right now, and you can check out uh, that project on the link below. So let's just kind of go ahead and get into it. Um, basically, when we are looking at muscle myonuclei in 3D, we have to go through a whole process uh, to get the fibers ready to be imaged. So here you can see a, um, a picture of me and a graduate student uh, working on that. So we are isolating individual muscle cells, staining them, and putting them on microscope slides. The next step from there is we get to go use this big bad machine called a laser scanning confocal microscope. Um, these things cost about a half a million dollars and they're pretty expensive even to rent. Um, so that's some of the work that we're we're kind of trying to fund here to get going. Um, basically kind of how this this whole thing works is it was developed in the 1950s by a guy named Marvin Minsky. If you've never heard of him, uh, I encourage you to Google him. He's a really interesting guy. He actually was one of the inventors of artificial intelligence. Um, he was one of the first, the founders of the MIT AI lab. So yeah, really interesting guy. And he also had time to uh, develop this. So pretty interesting. Um, but it wasn't really until the 70s to the 90s when you know computer advancements kind of caught up with this technique. And of course, this is one of the major achievements in optical imaging. And we can see here, this is the citations of published articles per year from 1990 till now. So 1990 is right about when the technology for computers you know, caught on to what was developed earlier in the 1950s. And you know, there's over 5,000 articles published a year nowadays using confocal microscopy. So you're probably asking, how does this work? Good question. Well, you can see here, these are the main components of the confocal microscope. Um, the main thing that you'll see here that's different than most other microscopes is what's called the confocal pinholes. Um, so how this works is you take a laser or a light source and you hit a wavelength, a certain wavelength off of what's called the dichroic mirror, also a dichroic beam splitter. So it's a pretty cool name. Um, this is just really a, a piece of glass with metal covering it, a real thin layer of metal. That bounces this wavelength off through an objective lens and hits your specimen. In our case, that's usually a muscle fiber. Another wavelength is going to bounce off of that specimen, uh, and then that's going to go through that dichroic mirror into that confocal pinhole and hit a detector, which, you know, we'll, that's how we get our images. Now, the advantage of this is you can see here, if any other light comes through, it's, it'll still pass through that dichroic mirror potentially, but it's not going to get through that pinhole. So that gives us, you know, a lot of control about what light gets in and out of that microscope. So some advantages of this is we can control the depth of the field. We can get real deep into a, a tissue. So our muscle cells are you know, 80 to 100 microns in diameter, and we can get inside the muscle cell and see what's going on there. Reduces other background information that we're not interested in. And then it enables us also to get a 3D image um, using serial sections, what it's called, of the whole muscle fiber. Um, so what we can get is actually something that looks like this. This is a... Uh, 3D muscle fiber from a human. You can see all the blue dots are muscle nuclei. That's what we're typically interested in in some of our projects. Uh, we're able to get whole cell volume from this, able to count the nuclei, look at their shape, um, look at kind of their orientation, where they're located. We can get a lot of really cool information on this. And so we hope to do this technique on athletes, um, old people, young people, fit people, unfit people, and just really kind of see you know, what muscle looks like at the cellular level. So thanks for uh, watching this short video. Again, check out our, our project on experiment.com and uh, hope to talk to you guys soon.